Roses are red, violets are blue. I wanna play some medals for you. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Monique, I'm a classical pianist, and today it's time for another one minute, 10 minutes, one hour challenge. As I already announced on Instagram, I want to do something that is like related to spring. I asked you to give me some suggestions and I decided to go with Mendelssohn Lieder ohne Worte Frühlingslied uh, or in English, it's uh, songs without words. I think opus 20, no, 62, number six. I'm not sure, I have to look up. Ha! I was right. It's actually dedicated to Clara Schumann, the whole opus 62, and it has six songs without words. And the last one out of this little collection has an extra name. It's called the Spring Song. So I decided to go with this and maybe I want to change my clothes so it fits the atmosphere a little bit better. <laughs> okay, that's better. So before we get started, I wanted to say as this piece is not a fast and furious piece, I think it might not be that obvious to many people what is difficult about this piece. So I'll talk a little bit about the difficulties in the one hour practice session. Before you get started, let's repeat the rules of this challenge. Just take any piece of your choice and then you get three practicing sessions. The first is one minute, then 10 minutes, and then one hour. And after every practicing session, you have to try to perform the piece just the way it is in that moment. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell.
As I said in the beginning, I want to talk a little bit about the difficulties of this piece because it might be not that obvious to everyone, but actually it's super difficult to play this piece. <laughs> in this piece we have three different voices. We have the bass, we have the top melody, and then we have the arpeggios in the middle. And all of these voices have different characters, and to create the character on point you need different movements. For me, the bass octave creates the foundation of the piece, and this needs a quite big movement through the whole length of one measure basically. So I would try to create like one big circle with my arm. And then I have arpeggios in the middle. I was trying different things. You could see it in the 10 minutes practice. I was trying to put it all in the left hand to see if I can get the movement easier if I do it just with one hand and it's not that complicated for my brain, but it's actually more complicated. So <laughs> I had to do it with both hands and then I had to try to decide how I want to move. The arpeggio for the right hand is, is, is obvious because you're just moving your elbow to the outside. But when you have to play the second arpeggio with the left hand, there are different ways. So for example, I could just play like this with the elbow into my body or I can play like this. Um, so I would go outside with the elbow. So I was trying different things like yum bum or yum bum. And, um, well, I decided to go with this. I wanted to have a lot of control over every single note in the arpeggio and this is like created through more freedom in your elbow. This movement is not really easy because you have to find the connection between your hands. You have to really feel the connection. Getting these arpeggios in the right timing with the right character and so on, this needs way more than just one hour of practicing. <laughs> Now after concentrating on the bass and on the middle arpeggios, the main melody is of course this what everyone hears in the end, but it only works if the foundation with bass and middle voices is working. So these two movements, in the bass and in the middle, these are quite strict and you have to keep going all the time. So you can just put the melody on top of it and it can move freely. Now, if I would only play the melody without all these arpeggios in the middle, I would have a lot of fingers to play the main melody and a lot of freedom, but I have to play these arpeggios simultaneously with my right hand, so I didn't have so much freedom and I had to create this freedom with a good fingering and this is what I was doing here. Now after practicing these three voices and finding out how to move, what the character is and so on, I have to put them in relation to each other. The bass note is basically the impulse for the middle voice, yum bum bum basically. So I had to listen to the bass note to create the middle voice correctly. And all this together has an impact on the main melody and the other way around. <laughs> so I had to find out like how are these voices related to each other and how do they affect each other. And this is way more difficult than people might think because you have to do this in different dynamical levels. So it is still very obvious for you as listeners 
where these three voices are, that there is a main melody, that there are the arpeggios in the middle and the bass. And this is very, very difficult. You need a lot of control. And to get this control, you have to find fingerings, which give you a lot of freedom in your move. So this was the challenge for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Have you ever played a song without words by Mendelssohn? Tell me in the comments down below. If you're interested to see how I was practicing the whole time, you'll find the whole recording uncutted on Patreon. Also all my fingerings and comments that I put into the scores. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. We'll see us in the next videos. Bye.